Now, one bright spot, though, is China's auto sector. Passenger car sales last month jumped 90 percent as tax cuts and government subsidies spurred on demand. And the government predicts that full-year auto sales may hit 12 million units, which may push China ahead of the U.S. as the world's biggest auto market. So what does this all mean for investors? Well, our next guest is bullish on China's auto sector. And we're joined today by Jack Yering of BNP Paribas. He is one of the top-ranked analysts on Denway Motors, Dongfeng Motors, and BYD, his recommendations have generated returns of as much as 114%. Welcome to the program, Jack. How are you on this Friday? I'm fine, thank you. Excellent. So let's talk about China's auto market. It just seems to be steamrolling ahead, doesn't it? Uh, recently, we spoke to uh, a fund manager, IVIM, which is one of the best performing uh, long short funds here in the Asia Pac, and they say to play on the Chinese economy, you got to get into the auto sector. Yes. I think the auto sector still can grow uh, at the August pace. I think that we are expecting more uh, Chinese government subsidies coming uh, after the consumption uh, tax cut earlier this year expire at the end of this year. This could push another boost in auto sales. And there, because China's uh, penetration rate for the auto sector is fairly low, less than 3%, compared to the West is more than 50%. So there's a huge growth room for China to uh, move up further in uh, the auto sector. Oh, I bet. You saw a 90% jump in sales in August. Uh, you know, some people say that that's an unrealistic rate. Do you think we'll see that sort of growth for the rest of this year, or do you think it'll slow down a bit? I think we will see the same uh, uh, rate of growth uh, later uh, this year, mm -hmm. given there's a huge backlog of orders. Consumers now have to wait two to three months to get their car delivered. So even within um, July and August, uh, consider um, low season months, uh, mm -hmm. their sales have been uh, picked up dramatically compared to last year. So uh, definitely we're going to see a huge jump uh, during the last four months yeah. of this year. Why does it take two to three months to deliver a car in I China? I think last year what the automakers are expecting it's going to be a low a year for 2009. They are cutting back productions and they did not expect that uh, the government policy came out and the reaction could be that huge. So they, uh, the production in fact cannot meet the pace of the demand. That's why there's a backlog orders. And why is the government focusing so much stimulus and incentives towards the uh, car industry? I think the auto industry Industry accounts now more than about 2% of the GDP, and that's why uh, the, it's a major contribution and uh, create a lot of jobs. About uh, each factory creates 30 to 40,000 uh, jobs, mm -hmm. so it's a major part of the GDP. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get into your stock picks then. It's understandable why the government wants to support this industry. Um, let's first start off with one of the uh, recommendations on your list, which is Denway Motors, and we've spoken to Mark Mobius, who, who also likes the stock as well, though not your counterpart, not this, uh, <laughs> I guess, your peer, this uh, other auto analyst at Nomura who says, uh, Denway Motors, pretty rich, margins not so good. Uh, I don't agree with that. I think uh, Denway Motor, uh, uh, it's a uh, end of performer this year uh, due to uh, lack of uh, new models, but uh, we are expecting uh, more new models coming out next year, and the new Linian brand is 100% owned by Guangzhou Honda, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it will move further for uh, Denway, and also Denway is setting up a, a new uh, engine plant in Guangzhou that will also help them to have more supplier to choose from as their current uh, JV uh, are also shared with uh, Dongfeng Motor mm -hmm. and they share 30% of their revenue. So therefore, uh, it's more a uh, potential upside for next year for Denway. And it's a great point to enter at this point. Okay. Yeah. Dongfeng and Denway are collaborative in this joint venture? For the engine plant. For the, the engine, engine plant. plant yes. uh, but you actually prefer Denway over Dongfeng, yes. which I don't hear very often, uh -huh. to be honest. Mm -hmm. but, but, uh, because if you look at Denway, I mean, didn't their first half profit actually fall 4%? Yes. Isn't I, there some concern? I think the first half of profit falls because of uh, lack of new models, whereas Dongfeng has more product mix. But Dongfeng uh, has uh, exposure to the truck sector and truck sector are not performing well in China. I don't think they uh, going to perform well in the next 12 months. And that's why I believe uh, within the new models and uh, um, coming up with uh, their own supplier base, mm -hmm. I think this is going to push uh, the share price higher uh, in the next 12 months for Danway. Really? How much yeah. higher? Because, uh, okay, from what I see, you're assuming an upside of maybe 8%. 
to four Hong Kong dollars. Have you raised your forecast? Yes, I have. Uh, uh, now my target price is four dollar fifty. Oh, so four dollar fifty cents. <laughs> so it's another twenty percent uh, from the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, the average analyst target that we have four twenty three. Okay, yeah. so it's a little bit above what uh, the average yes. analyst is uh, seeing. But what, why? Why such? Um, you know, I would say it's minimal gains, to be honest. If you're, you're talking about 90% uh, sales growth each mm -hmm. month, I, 450 from here, I, hmm, doesn't seem compelling as an investor, I have to say. Uh, I think for Denway, it's a long-term buy. We, we buy Denway as a long-term. Uh, the company has um, tons of cash and good balance sheet. And with uh, the new models, so with the new uh, supplier base, I think this stock can, um, can grow and this year, the stock is a lagger, mm -hmm. uh, given um, they they have lack of uh, new models compared to Dongfeng. That that is why. Okay, so I have to ask you because everyone keeps talking about consolidation uh -huh. in the car market. Mm -hmm. Do you think Denway might be one of the consolidators? Um, maybe, but uh, I don't think so because uh, I don't think the Chinese government is mm -hmm. successful in uh, auto consolidation. <laughs> they have been talking at this for more than yes. uh, a decade, and we are seeing more auto companies than it can. Consolidated, and there are more than 200 auto com automakers in China. So I don't think uh, the, this policy is going to work. Oh. It's in each province's uh, benefit to have an uh, auto uh, plan there. Well, do you think uh, Denway might go out and buy a foreign car brand? Since we've, that seems to be the trend for Chinese car makers. Uh, yes, I think uh, that's a possibility. W which ones do you think? The American brands? It depends on what it is, or. Uh, it's hard to say at this moment. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the companies are also exploring, as you know, they uh, had signed an agreement with Fiat earlier yes. this year in uh, Italy. So I'm seeing uh, that definitely Denway is uh, expanding uh, uh, f dramatically. But, okay, uh, Jack, let's uh, stop it there because we're going to get a commercial break. When we okay. get back, we'll talk about Dongfang and uh, Great Wall and BYD as well. We're talking to uh, Jack Yang of BNP Paribas. More on these uh, Chinese car picks after this break. Stay with us. Now, now, speaking of China, let's get back to our discussion with Jack Ye, who is one of the top-ranked analysts uh, on Chinese auto stocks uh, around. In fact, uh, some of his uh, recommendations have yielded returns of over 100 percent. Jack, uh, let's uh, get back to our discussion. We went to Bray talking about Denway. You're pretty upbeat on this uh, stock. But another one that you like is Great Wall Motor. Yes. It's interesting because it's not exactly go green friendly, is it? Yes, but Grey was targeted to the rural area in China, and we are seeing that the major growth uh, for the sector in the future for China will be in the countryside. And Grey was uh, got solid management, and their sedan just uh, introduced the last year. The first three months of this year has already surpassed the full year of last year, mm. and the sales volume has risen dramatically ever since. And pickup trucks is their niche, mm -hmm. and they are capturing the low end market. And that's why you have, uh, I guess, a, a big forecast on the stock, expecting it to reach close to ten dollars, yes. which is actually up thirty-four percent from here. That's a, you have greater expectations yes. for Great Wall than mm. than Denway. I think uh, Denway is for the mid-high end um, uh, market, mm -hmm. whereas Great Wall is a mid-low or low end market. Mm -hmm. We see more growth in the low end market, given the Chinese government's consumption tax cut is to target for the uh, lower end market rather than uh, upper end market. Mm -hmm. and, and what about talk of um, maybe an IPO in Shanghai? We were just talking about IPO fever on the mainland with Kathy. But do you think it's possible that Great Wall may sell shares in Shanghai in three years' time? And is that price into the stock already? Uh, I think Great Wall is in the process of applying for IPO in Shanghai. There's a possibility for them to get listed on Asia. Um, I think uh, given uh, their uh, strengths and uh, um, given their market share, they are getting market share every year. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see why they couldn't list it on Asia. Okay, well, let me just ask you about another company, BYD. This is much talked about, of course, because of the Buffett uh, Midas mm -hmm. touch. Uh, this stock shot up once uh, everyone found out that Warren Buffett's company actually put money into this. So let me just ask you, you know, what do you like about BOID? It's run up quite a lot, quadrupling, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. since the Buffett announcement. It's trading at, you know, huge PE. So what makes this stock so attractive? I think BOID is a pioneer in China in terms of uh, manufacturing hybrid electric cars. And they are one of the first. And their management is very innovative. 
Uh, plus, uh, they are g uh, gaining uh, a lot of market share, not only on the hybrid electric, but on the uh, conventional car. Conventional car up 180% for the uh, first half of 2009. Mm. And sales uh, has been picked up ever since. Um, and we are seeing that China uh, is moving toward the hybrid electric car sector. Yeah, that's the only sector, I believe, that will put China to catch up to the world. And uh, that's also what the government uh, wanted. And we, we don't see uh, that much uh, auto sales um, uh, picking up in the hybrid uh, electric vehicles, mm -hmm. given the current subsidies only targeted for gov government agencies or government offices. Right. I think the, if the government uh, expanded to ordinary uh, Chinese consumers, mm -hmm. that's, uh, we're going to see a huge pickup in the uh, sector. And that's why you're so bullish on this stock. Uh, still expecting it to get to $60.38, which is much higher than the average uh, estimate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll see if it gets there. It's already uh, shot up quite a bit. Jack, nice seeing you. Have nice a great weekend. You. Jack Young of BMP Power.